Hello, and welcome to Moments with Mind Leaps. Thank you for being back with us on a Friday. And as you know, I am Rebecca, the executive director of Mind Leaps. And this is my favorite part of my job right now, is I get to interview a wonderful artists, very inspirational dancers from around the world um, who are joining us and sharing with us thoughts on the arts, their experience, and all of these things. And this week, I get to be joined by Chloe Davis. Okay. Oh. Yes. Uh, Chloe's joining us, and Chloe has been an uh, inspiration for such a long time. Hi, Chloe. Hi. How are you? How's everybody? Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I know that it's crazy times for all of us, and yet still with all of your engagements and all of your worries and troubles and future aspirations, you're still making time to share your thoughts with us. So thank you, Chloe, for being with us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, for those of you who might not know Chloe, although I'm not sure that that's possible, Chloe has had an extensive career from Philodenko to performing with the Adams family to a new endeavor with Aida that she might share with us a little bit about that unusual experience that she's had, as well as performing with Jesus Christ Superstar and performing on television and in her spare time going to Rwanda, Africa. So thank you so much, Chloe, for, for taking the time out of these exciting things to speak with us again. Absolutely. I I already... such a great, <laughs> such a, a, a great organization. Um, what you do, Rebecca, <laughs> uh, should be heavily applauded. Um, and I can't wait to talk about my experience <laughs> when <laughs> I went to Rwanda. <laughs> uh, well, I know that one of the things that's connected us as well as our larger community and I see our friends jumping in, Abuba and Bashir from Rwanda, uh, is really understanding that the arts, dance, and for you it goes beyond dance, really find a place inside us and kind of like keep us going no matter what obstacles jump up in our faces. Mm -hmm. And I know of, of all of the, the, the breadth of experiences you've had, Chloe, maybe you could just share with us a little bit about what the arts mean to you, maybe what dance specifically means to you as you've gone through these tremendous experiences. Absolutely. Um, well, when I think about art and I think about dance, I just think about creative expression. Um, I think of the language, you know, we have language that we communicate that we can verbally understand. And I just think like dance and art is just a way to visually understand and visually communicate with each other. Um, you know, when you see dance, particularly, or just when you see art, artistic work, you know, it evokes feeling, it evokes ideas and, you know, and ignites other creative forms within other people. Um, so I think that's the best broad explanation. Like, what does art mean to me? It, it means communication. It means um, this inner and outer communication that I'm able to give to myself as well as give, you know, to a larger community, to the world. Um, so yeah, that that that's what dance is, and dance is like, it's it's me, you know, it, it's <laughs> my life. Um, it's something I've been very passionate about for such a young age, and it's something that has uh, given me a, a long career, which I I'm very very humbled and blessed to have had that experience. It's it's really thoughtful what you say about this idea of communication. You know, sometimes it's interesting. You end up in a conversation with somebody on the street or in the subway. And they're like, oh, I don't dance. Like, I can't dance. But that's, it's so much more than that. It's, as you say, it's like a way to, to express the, the emotions, both inside and outside. And sometimes it gets put into a box. It's some traditional art form that gets memorized and repeated. But it really is this way to, to communicate. And uh, we've seen you do that in your professional career across all different ways, using your voice, not using your voice, on television, on the live stage, in community classes, Maybe you could speak a little bit about how you've seen you, those experiences come to life for you across all of those different scenarios of the arts. Right. Well, I guess, so I know we, we you know, dancers, I'm just going to say dancers or artists, you, you, <laughs> you inspire to reach a certain level, right? We, whether, you know, it'd be dancing in a professional dance company, uh, dancing in like a venue that's, you know, high profile, um, 
dancing on Broadway, you know, or even, um, you know, on film and television, you know, we have, we have these uh, heightened senses of like, oh, this is success. But what I've learned is that without um, the building blocks and without the opportunity to have art and experience it, for me, experience dance, um, whether it be in huge venues or whether it be in small venues or whether it be one-on-one -on -one personal interaction, I needed all of those, you know? Mm -hmm. one, regardless of how much money I made or how much money I didn't make, uh, superseded the other, right? I mean, I've <laughs> had an opportunity to, um, most recently, um, I made my... Met Metropolitan Opera debut in Porgy and Bess. And of course, you know, the Met Opera. Yeah, you're right? on the stage. It, that's right? it. That's the pinnacle, <laughs> right? And it was um, such an outstanding experience and also um, an experience to be able to share my Met debut with other um, uh, Black artists of color or, or, or Black artists or artists of color, you know, to make that debut together was, was outstanding. Um, but that experience, you know, was wonderful, but I'm going to go back to Rwanda, not just because it's mind leaps, but <laughs> it's because it's substantial, you know, to uh, it, just an opportunity to teach these young, you know, hungry minds, you know, um, movement and how to find their own inner uh, creative button, you know, was outstanding that experience you know and they're totally different one is on a teaching aspect but i'm st yeah. still performing and even performing um with you rebecca uh when we did the east african nights of tolerance mm -hmm. there and um it was a uh, a trio with um ibn and um dj you know that was a smaller venue but mm -hmm. that impact and that opportunity to express my inner and outer self you know, there, and even the opportunity on the Met stage, both have equal weight to me, you know? So I guess, I guess the biggest thing is to say that we aspire to be able to uh, have our artistic platform, you know, on high profile places. But I think I just inspire to have my creativity and artistic platform in many, many elements, you know, um, just that feeds me to continue to to create art you know and to present art i think that's what i love best i think what you say about you know the building blocks right that, that you needed those building blocks but i would probably be tempted to say everybody needs those building blocks no matter what you're building if you're building a professional career as an artist if you're building a company if you're building an academic career and the those building blocks give us um the sensitivity to to the work and then the appreciation of the reward. We were with Carlos Renato last week and he, he, you know, he commented on the fact that we're in such a busy world and dancers who are in New York are like, you know, I need this, this, like I need it 30 seconds ago. And if, if I miss the subway car, then I'll miss the chance of my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But if we appreciate those building blocks and, and your career is a testament to it, it prepares you to really be an artist that can speak on so many different levels. Yeah. Um, as you alluded to, I had the, the tremendous chance of my lifetime to, to work with you and even Snell and DJ Smart Jr. when we created this piece to think about what would a family go through in a period of a mass atrocity. Mm -hmm. And then the, the moral weight of presenting that in Rwanda, a community yeah. that will always understand that in a way that I cannot. Uh, and I remember just one of the most touching moments of, of that whole experience is after you performed it, other Rwandans coming up to us and saying those dancers understood us mm. and Chloe I mean it's exactly what you say it's a gift that you're giving that in any of these corners of the world changes lives yeah I I think you know I think there's several reasons why we connected um and I want to say first and foremost is that it's storytelling right and that there is empathy and their sympathy, you know, all of those things. There's the integrity of just making sure you're telling a story and you're being truthful with it. And that's 
that's art. Like it's just being vulnerable enough to be able to show yourself because that's when people receive you. And, you know, us learning about the history, you know, um, us wanting to do do justice as far as telling this story, even though we hadn't physically gone through it. But I think also also, um, the three of us being, you know, black dancers in America, we understand certain oppressions as well. And so we were also sharing our story. We had this um, commonality when it, came, when it came to this idea of uh, being oppressed, uh, feeling hate, you know what I mean? Um, but I, I was so happy that they took to it um, and they received us. Um, and they saw themselves in, in me. They saw themselves in us. I think that's one of the most um, special moments. That's, you know, that's an honor, you know. And I feel like that goes back into, like, being an artist, tapping into that place, whether you are an actor or a singer or a dancer or a visual artist, it's that you're tapping into a place where people can see themselves. And that's back to the communication yeah. that I spoke about. Yeah. You know, if, if you're if if you're seeing yourself in me, then that means we're communicating, you know, so. And like, which, again, like so many of the things you say really resonate and also as as our lives have, have grown up um, since that since that time back in 2012 in Rwanda. <laughs> and I remember, you know? I know, right? It means that you have to come back as soon as we can travel. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I remember you saying to me, you know, like, Rebecca, let's find a way that we can bring all of these multiple voices of artists of different representations to this work, because there's some commonality w- that we have to find, but no one person can find it. No. And I think it was so important that you said that to me then. Mm. And I think it's been something that we've tried to do at Mind Leaves and we want to try to do better. And it's because we have such great artists who understand what we do and can also guide me. So I just want to thank you for, for highlighting that to me and absolutely and helping me figure out what that means for us and our communities as they grow larger and larger <laughs> and larger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, mind leaks has just grown substantially. I mean, that was eight years ago. Wow. But uh, Rebecca, like I said, your this, this idea, this passion, this organization to, you know, just bring artistic expression to undeserved, well, unre- underrepresented uh, um, communities, you know, and I just, I just think it was amazing. And also when I went to Rwanda, that was my first time, you know, in Africa. And that was a dream. Like I have always wanted to go to Africa and, you know, to go to the fertile ground of Rwanda was an experience of a lifetime. It was so humbling. Yeah. You know, first of all, <laughs> the people of Rwanda are the most kind, loving, compassionate people that I've met. And if you think about the history and what they went through, you know, but their hearts are so full and so giving. So, you know, to be able to be welcomed, you know, to the motherland and be welcomed by these beautiful souls was outstanding, you know, and then it was also humbling and an eye awakening experience for me, you know, being a black American and, you know, seeing, seeing what I have here, but also understanding the injustice and the oppression and the hate that I experienced, but fighting through that and knowing that I have brothers and sisters there that are rooting for me to be my best, that yeah. you know, to literally be my best so that they, can see someone who looks like them being their best and they can, uh, you know, aspire to, to do that. And, you know, I, I loved it. It was, I was just so humbled to meet people from Kenya and from, um, you know, Congo, from Uganda, Uganda, Uganda South Africa, everybody. Yeah, Tanzania. It was, it was beautiful. The festival was absolutely gorgeous. And so I had that aspect to just connect creative, creatively with my peers from other countries in Africa. I mean, that was impeccable. But the, but the other experience that holds near and dear to my heart is being able to teach, you know, child soldiers and, and orphans. You know what I mean? Like, for me to literally hold them up and introduce to them 
artistic expression to find the freedom to to let that exude out of them you know that was that was a blessing and it's one of those things where sometimes as an artist you're just like oh yes i'm supposed to create and produce and create and produce but you're also supposed you're also supposed to teach you're supposed to share right yes. so i was able to like give a service and share my passion and it was just oh man I just remember those little those little faces and to see them get older, right? And now they're uh, like my height. <laughs> yeah, they're like young men now, the ones that I was there. And and now that you've also started, you know, in certain places, um, you know, the program for young girls, because you know, we, we deal with that all over the world where, you know, male privilege and that males are or boys are able to receive certain things that you know, females are not. And, you know, art was particularly a thing then. And I remember we didn't have a program um, then for young girls, but I remember two little girls, they came. And <laughs> you know, we did our own little class on the outside. But um, but I love that you do have a program now. And I believe Misty Copeland was um, instrumental in making sure that that um, experience was for them as well. That was you too, Clue. I mean, it's all these things that these wonderful dancers have said to me over the time that we've built Mind Leaps. And you're saying like, look, there's other voices that need to be a part of this. Look, they get it. Like, mm -hmm. let them in. <laughs> um, and then Misty coming and, and really saying like, you know, where, where are girls going to flourish in this program? And it's been like this series of artists who've had this kind of connective feedback to, to helping us make sure that this tool works. Yeah. We um, we had the chance to start this series moments with Mind Leaps with Lamar where, you know, he said, just remember, like, the universe will guide you on how to use your talents. Mm -hmm. And then Bashir Karenzi, who you remember from Rwanda, is, mm -hmm. said basically the summary of what you've just said about the Rwandan people is, like, remember to be grateful and smile. Yeah. And, and Caitlin Casson remembering that, you know, dance is what connects us to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And Mark Caserta saying, just like treat others the way we treat ourselves. See. And Andy, one of our researchers who's also traveled to Rwanda, reminding us to like stretch our minds at the same time that we stretch our bodies. Yeah. And last week, Carlos reminding us that similar to what you're saying is that when we dance, we dance to inspire others, but sometimes you end up inspired. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I think like what you say, I mean, it's it sounds so short, like, oh, dance is communication, but what like really like the moment that you're telling us when those two little girls started mm -hmm. dancing because of you mm -hmm. in a totally different place on a like totally corner of the planet yeah. with no language no other people yeah. there to translate or help like mm -hmm. that is communication and that proved to me why girls should be a part of this program and these opportunities so the the impact that all of you have had on this kind of growing <laughs> growing uh, organization is really um, uh, obvious in my mind. So. No. Well, thank you. Thank you for, well, I also want to say thank you to Lamar Baylor. Um, uh, oh he's, my goodness, uh, he saves us every day. <laughs> yeah, very instrumental in Mind Leaps and um, actually recommended me do this program and I, you know, I am a, I am a fan. I am completely a fan of Mind Leaps and excited to come back and have another opportunity um, to experience that, I, I mean, I think about that all the time. It's, it's so interesting because I was having a conversation with my mom this week about my experience in Rwanda. And um, and I was also telling her about the genocide um, museum. And I I can be emotional. I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. But I, I'm usually pretty, like, you know, I'm okay. I'm usually pretty contained. But just learning more about the history you know, of the genocide and why. And, you know, I think that also gave me so much more ammunition to perform the way I performed, you know, because, you know, and if we, we might not even think about history, but, you know, sometimes history is art too. And, you know, I just learning about what the hurt and the, and the hate that happened, I just want to be, I want it to give love because I know love heals everything right yeah. and i just wanted to exude love i wanted to perform love i wanted to just distinguish love you know um because that that did a number on me i mean i remember people were even like chloe is she okay you know <laughs> oh 
because we're used to always seeing you like so strong and protecting all of us and helping us organize ourselves and then there's like yeah. these true moments of vulnerability but as you say yeah. that's what allows you to be received right that's what makes the communication work yeah. absolutely yeah well so tell us how are you surviving now i mean unfortunately we probably both wish we were in rwanda and we're not uh, what, what does covid covid life mean for chloe well <laughs> well um it's so un it, i okay i want to look at this positively but <laughs> real you know uh so i let's be Go real for it. to be real is that it's like someone literally snatched my life away yeah. that's what it feels like um i was in the midst of doing a workshop um it was uh, a workshop for an an upper up and coming national tour broadway national tour and we were maybe i don't know three days into our workshop and you know we got uh we had a creative team meeting because i was a the assistant choreographer on it and the director was like you know i think we're gonna end uh early and we're like okay but early meaning end of day so um, we ended, end of day, we ended the workshop. And also that evening, Broadway announced that they were closing. And, you know, just following up, you know, there have been many different dates when Broadway thought that they were going to open. And now I think it's like September, I don't know. But there's still, I don't think that that is going to be their reopening date either. And although reopening is happening in New York, um, Broadway theater, you know, think those type of uh, events and functions. Yeah. We're gonna be the last, the very, very, very last. So then, it you know, truthfully, it puts you in a place of um, uncertainty, of anxiety, you know, because it's like it's not that you don't want to work because you want to, you want to do this. You're not, you're not given the opportunity to, to at least in the type of way you thought, right? Like. Right. Right. The beautiful, and I, I, I will continue to say this, even I know we can be creative and technology is amazing and we're streaming and we're creating online. Yes, thank you for these platforms. However, it's still not the same as live theater. It's still not that type of communication that I was talking about. Um, it's just different. And that's what makes artists, particularly performing artists, or when you see something live, that's what makes it special. That's the type of... Because it's a quality you can't get anywhere else. So I'm not saying I'm not able to create. I'm just not able to create in the same way um, I was used to. That has been that has felt organic to me. Yeah. Um, so then it puts my mind in overdrive because I don't want to be resistant, right? Because if I'm, I'm resistant, then I, I might not make a comeback. Um, but I'm putting my mind in ways of how can I continue to be creative um, because how can I continue to communicate, right? Yeah. Is, ha oh. Service my passion like losing for, your voice. for yeah. others, right? Yeah. Um, so that's where I am now yeah. doing. Um, I am a current member with Camille Brown and Dancers, mm -hmm. and uh, we were provided an opportunity to teach uh, live IG classes and do lectures. So I've done a few of those. Um, actually, yesterday I did... Um, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. I did like a master class, which was a lot of fun. You should have told me. I would have joined. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, um, so that that's kind of we're keeping it going with that. However, you know, I think it's just the day by day. You know, like trying to figure out, you know, what is next for me. Not giving up the dream. You know, n hoping that the world understands the importance. Um, of live theater that it just cannot be replaced and I hope it's not like like I said I love technology and I think technology can enhance experiences but it is it cannot replace I I, I first of all like I so appreciate the honesty I, I mean I think at this point in, during COVID crisis I've been in so many different circles for different reasons mm -hmm. where everyone is almost especially kind of you know that typical New York where you put on the outside and say, oh, this has to be the best thing that's ever happened to us. And we just don't know it yet. Right. Yeah. And like, you know, this kind of like artificial, this works. Um, so I just really like, personally, to be honest, to somebody <laughs> just saying exactly like what reality sometimes is. And that also crazy. allows us to find solutions. 
yeah. yeah. Um, and I also think, I mean, the it's also been interesting for me to also hear people say like, okay, well, you choose technology and you choose the live arts, or we're learning new ways to be more efficient or like save money. And I think, you know, what you say is, is so appropriate. There's something here that's existed since way before all of us mm -hmm. and should thrive way far into the future. Right. And we don't have to be so quick to, to give up something just because today it might be difficult to, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, oh, no, I just doing my heart close. When we come back, <laughs> that we're stronger. And it's, you know, it's not just Broadway. You know what I mean? Like, we're talking theater we're talking entertainment we're you know i was i was looking at a movie and i just saw like this massive audience you know what i mean like in a stadium i think i was even watching becoming um with michelle obama and you know to have like that energy of all those people packed together you know i know yeah. that makes some people cringe like oh no but ah, that's unity and that's you what you'll I mean? remember forever yeah that's <laughs> unity that that provides a vibration that you just won't able you're not able to get that same vibration through you know you know a phone or a computer or whatever you, it's just not the same it's not yeah. the same yeah one of our guests is saying nothing can take the place of live performance so we're all in agreement with you yes <laughs> yep, i agree so we're gonna come back stronger i believe it <laughs> chloe thank you so much for spending absolutely these lovely minutes with us, which have been so refreshing, <laughs> very refreshing. And I think what you just say is, is so true. And it's not just saying, oh, dance is communication. It's saying everything that you've shared with us over this last, this last um, period of time together. And those different levels of communication, which are so powerful and so unique and so nuanced and can connect so deeply. I'm just really grateful to have you in my life. And I thank you so much for spending time on Moments with My Niece with us. Absolutely. That, oh, hold on. I want to give a little, say hi. <laughs> As Chloe um, makes, yeah, Chloe has to say hi to everybody. Um, and you will be happy to know, Chloe, next week is DJ Smart Jr. Yay. So okay. We'll be talking about you again. And yeah. Tracy, I hope that you're signed up as well, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Stay strong, stay safe, and we can't wait to have you back in Africa. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks okay. so much, Chloe. Bye. Bye-bye.